Hey everybody, it's Mr. Math Blog here, and all your lessons are, can be found at www.mrmathblog.com. So you just go up there and click uh, third grade link, uh, and and your lessons will be there. Okay, so here's our Common Core strand for our, our teachers. Our essential question is how can we use the distributive property to help us find products? Okay, so Daniel bought uh, six new shirts. He paid for seven. He paid seven dollars for each shirt. So how much did he spend in all? Okay, well here's two shirts, but he bought six of them right here. So we're going to find six times seven, and we're going to use the distributive property to solve this problem. Okay. So here, let's describe the group that uh, the groups that in this problem. Well, the groups are going to be the six new shirts at seven dollars a piece, and then circle the numbers we're going to be using. So we're going to circle the the six and the seven. Okay. So obviously right here it says 6 times 7, so those are the numbers we're going to do. And we're going to use the distributive property to help solve this. Okay, so uh, the distributive property states that uh, multiplying a sum, a sum means addition, by a number is the same as multiplying each add-end uh, by that number and then adding the products. Okay, well product is just... Um, uh, it's just the answer to a multiplication problem. I'll explain that in just a second. So here, for example, this is the distributive property, and I should have uh, drawn that. I'll try and draw it right here. Oops, let me get a smaller pin right here. So um, uh, when you do uh, a number times the sum of two numbers inside, then you just do, uh, I'll do it in red here since I have my A as red right there. Then I'm going to go uh, A times B. Whoops, I didn't grab that. A times this first number, and then plus, there's my plus sign right there, and then we'll do A times this second number right there. It's called the distributive property right there. Okay, whoops, I did it nicely there. Okay, so uh, so a reminder, sum is just the answer to an addition problem. Product, I should have put that down there. Product is the answer to a multiplication problem. And the add-ins, you guys, are just the numbers that are being added. So B and C would be the add-ins right here. So... So what the distributive property just means we're going to distribute this A through the parentheses and it becomes multiplication. So this times means A times every number inside the parentheses sign right there. That's what we're going to do in this lesson here. So we're going to find 6 times 7 using the distributive property. So here let's uh, our materials are going to be some counting pieces. I have some little circles I'm going to use and I'm going to make an array. Uh, with pieces showing six rows of seven. Okay, so here's uh, six rows of seven right there. Okay, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Sorry, down there, and then seven going across. So six rows of seven. Okay, so this will represent our six times seven. So what we're going to do is break apart this array, this six by seven array, and make two smaller arrays for facts that we already know. Okay, so what we're going to do here is, is break it into uh, six rows of five here and then six rows of two here. Okay, six times five is an easy one. You can count by fives, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. So six times five would be 30. Six times two is 12. And then we're going to go ahead and add those. Let me move that up here. So six times seven equals six times five plus two because seven is equal to five plus two. Here's my five uh, columns plus two columns right there. Okay, five plus two are going to get me these seven columns right here. So I have just as many little dots here as I do over here, except I just separated them up into six by five and six by seven. So there it is. Six times seven equals six times five plus six times two. Okay, and if I distributed this six through six times five plus six times two. That's what this says right here, okay? So um, six times five is 30 and six times two is 12. So when we add those together, we get 42. So six times seven equals 42, okay? Nice easy way. So Daniel spent $42 for his new shirts. All right, so what, uh, what's another way we could have broken apart the six by seven arrays? Okay, I like six times five, but say we wanted to do uh, six times four and six times three. Because 7 is the same as 4 plus 3 right there. So we can do 6 times 4 plus 6 times 3. So here's here's uh, 6 rows of 4, and then here's 6 rows of 3. Okay, 6 times 4, and then add uh, this uh, uh, batch right here is 6 times 3. So 6 times 4 is 24. 
and 6 times 3 is 18, and so if we added 24 and 18, we'd still get $42, okay? So you pick whichever ones are convenient for you. All right, here's another one. So suppose Daniel bought nine shirts, and since he bought more shirts, they were only $6 each. So he bought nine shirts uh, at $6 each. So here's nine rows of six right here, okay? All right, so... Uh, we can break apart this 9 by 6 into two smaller arrays for facts that we already know. So one way is to just think of 9 as 5 times 4. So I'm going to cut this 9 up, this uh, 9 rows, into 5 rows and 4 rows right there, and then add those together. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and draw a line to show this and then find the product. Okay, so there's the line. So now this is 5 uh, times 6, and this one is 4 times 6. Okay, and then we can go ahead and multiply. Uh, 9 uh, times 6 is the same as 5 plus 4 times 6. Okay, and then so if we did the distributive property, uh, it's kind of backwards. 6 times 5 and then 6 times 4. Okay, so this would be uh, 6 times 5 and 6 times 4 right there. Okay, so I color coded them. There's my red 6. So I did 6 times this blue 5 and then 6 times this blue 4. And then uh, this plus sign represents this plus sign right here. And then over here, here's uh, uh, 5 times 6. Here's five, or 4 times 6 right here, okay? So um, uh, we're going to get uh, 9 times 6 is going to be, well, what's this? 5 times 6 is going to be 30. It's going to go right there. 4 times 6 is going to be 24. So we go ahead and add 30 plus 24, and we get 54. So Daniel spent $54, okay? All right, I hope that makes sense, you guys. And... And if you remember, your lessons are found at uh, mrmathblog.com.